This is part 5 of the basic Python programming tutorial for intermediate and new uh, Blender users. I'm using version 2.63a. And in this lesson, and for say the next uh, 4 or 5 lessons, what we'll do is we'll set up say a Vegas style water fountain type scene. And we'll begin with our original design, but I've modified it a little bit here and we'll modify it extensively over the course of the next several lessons. So in this case I actually have a plane on the scene and before we were drawing upward at each of these locations I just did not increase the Z value because it actually cleaned up the scene a little bit for me. And instead of drawing a cube I just have a plane drawn because we'll be adding a particle system to the scene and the uh, in the particle system, the particles would emanate from all faces of the cube, and I just wanted to emanate from this uh, face of the plane instead. So let's take a look. So over here in the code, I have a couple of things that I've changed. Uh, one is, um, let's see, right in here, previously when we were placing a cube in the scene, this actually said cube object. And down here, this would have said cube object right here where we're adding it. But instead I've defined a couple of the things, add cube, add plane, and add icosphere to represent these. So it, it seems just like a more logical approach so that when I'm cycling through the loop I add a plane at a location. All right. So that was easier for me. What, you don't have to change it, no big deal. Uh, the other thing is, uh, one thing I like to do in my code to make it easier to look at is uh, in I like to use capital letters in front of critical areas like in, say we're designing the f for defining the function here I use capital letters here's another function we'll look at here in a second that I'm using to find the colors and the main function so for me it's just easier when I'm scrolling through the code I can quickly you know see areas that I'm working on and the spacing really helps like sometimes I'll even put more space like that between here so if I'm scrolling fast through the code I can quickly differentiate between different sections of code like this. So um, so that's one thing and then down here here we had the Z value where I was incrementing by I, I forget four maybe each time through the loop but this time I turned it to zero so it stays flat and we're drawing the plane instead. Okay now let's continue on. Also in this lesson we'll add conditional statements, the if statement and a uh, couple more things. One to keep the code a little bit cleaner Instead of using this um, magenta color that we defined in here, I'm going to take this out of the function. I'm going to use my definitions outside of here. So let's try something first. I'm going to this is just to show you something about programming. In case you're new to programming, for those of you who've been programming, it's just you get this. All right. So up in here, what I've done, I. I took the same information, but I wanted to define a bunch of colors. I wanted to define all the primary and secondary colors that are common in art. So that's red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And so I gave them my comment about it. I changed it each one, and I changed the, the variable accordingly. And then over here, here's red. Red is on, green and blue are off. Green is on, red and blue are off. Blue is on, red and green are off. For cyan, green and blue are all the way on. Magenta, red and blue are all the way on. Yellow, red and green. And black, everything is turned off. So I have all these colors defined in advance. And up here in the main function, I, I called this the init color routine like this. So I've encapsulated it as its own little entity. And then up here in the main function, I'm going to call init colors before I call the design drawing function down here, which is where we do our main drawing. All right, so one of the reasons for this is that once I have it in this format, then I can take it from here and I can use it in another program. So I'm kind of modularizing as I go and I'm kind of using bits and pieces so I don't have to recreate everything each and every time. All right, so, but now there's going to be a problem if we try and run this and I'm going to show you what the problem is and it's to, it serves to point out a lesson about programming and that is, let's go over to the first layer only where I had all the uh, planes draw them. I'm going to highlight them all. I'm going to delete them all. I get done before. I'm going to write, run the script. And it says Python script fail. Let's see what it says. It says that the global name magenta color is not defined. All right. So, so the problem with this is let's just look at this whole screen here like this. It says it's a global name. Well, up in here I called the knit colors and it ran through these things. But when it got down into line 105 here was actually trying to use what was it? line 1 
yeah, magenta, right over here, magenta color. It's trying to use the magenta color, but it can't use it because it can't see it. Because commonly, uh, functions or methods, whatever you want to call them, they kind of encapsulate their data as local information, and, they're, and they don't know about information outside of it. It depends on the programming language. And in this case, with this, I can make all the routines know about these colors just by adding, well, we'll just add it to magenta because that's all we need, is I'll just make magenta color a global variable. So you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's, <laughs> oh, oh, here's the deal. Some people say globals are really a terrible thing, but globals can also be a really great thing, and they can be really fast because they're stored in memory and accessible to a lot of people, to a lot of your functions. So, you know, you have to use them sparingly sometimes, and other times you don't have to. Just know that I made this global, so now when I rerun the code, let's see, it should, it should run it. So now it knows about it because it's a global variable. I'm going to have to do the same thing for all the others, but I'll do that later outside of the lesson. All right, so there's that there. And then the other thing that I have added to the scene, and it is down in here, let's see. Down here, I've actually added a particle system as well. And so you'll want to know this line right here. Add a particle system, and right here, you don't need this get particles equals if you don't want it, but it's system particle underscore system underscore add and remember you can look at it down here I could just say dir ppy dot ops dot object and let's see if particle system shows up in there and particle system should be in there somewhere there it is particle system particle system add there's particle system add and particle system remove right there all right, so I added the system. So it should add a default particle system to each one of these as we go. And then let me see, let's just, well, let's just run it. Let's see what happens all day. Well, there it is. Let's get the uh, plane back in there. And let's run it all day. Oh, it's running, but it's they're all falling through the plane. And that's because in this case, remember, I had everything on the third layer, but the particles are added now to the first layer. So in order to fix that, I'm actually just going to have to move for now. So I'll have to remember this so I don't actually delete this. I'm going to move this over to the first layer, that plane. And then I'm going to go look at both layers. And then I'm also we'll just go up to my default window for a second. It's easier. I'm going to make sure there's a collision. Yeah, I have collision set right there. Actually, this is something it's important to know. Sometimes when you move things from one layer to the other, and even though I had a collision set on the, th on the third layer, you might actually have to turn it off and turn it back on for the collision to become active. All right? So where did this come from? I don't need that camera in there like that. All right, so it's scripting. Okay, let's run it. Let's see what it looks like. And so there, there they are. It just uses the default particles. Nothing really exciting, kind of just bouncing off of there like that. All right? <coughs> but it is a particle system, and that's good for starters. All right, and then one other thing we'll do is we'll do a, a quick little, just maybe we'll do our first little if statement, and then we'll continue in the next lesson. But let's see what we want to do here. Let's say, let's make something simple. We'll use a simple if statement. And... Let's do this. So, so we're uh, within the loop. We're going around here. This is our theta is less than or equal to two eight, while theta is less than or equal to to two point six point two eight. If I'm just going to make a conditional statement in here, I'm going to say if, and I use the parentheses. This is from old days from doing C programming, but you don't need that parentheses. Uh, and we'll say if uh, theta is greater than, say, 3.14, so greater than halfway around the circle, or greater than pi, then we will... Wait, I see, it's, I don't know, it's, oh, that should be doing a whole tab. I don't know what that's doing there. That's kind of goofy. All right, z plus equal, let's equal z plus equal to 4.0. And let's see what happens there. So it should be changing the, uh, the z value in some cases by doing it, and did I, what did I forget on there, anything, if theta is, oh, there's one thing I missed, you have to have a colon 
at the end of your conditional statement. So what it says is it's going to go check for the value of theta. If theta is greater than 3.414, it's going to execute this statement. And it won't execute anything else because this is the only one that's indented in the scene. So let's, just for the moment, I'm going to move the plane back to the third layer so I don't, I don't forget. And then I'll get rid of these guys. I'll X them out. Whoops. Delete those. And I'll rerun it. And so let's see what happens. That means sum. So there it is. So the first half of the circle, before I got to 3.4, before I got to pi, halfway around the circle, like that. Remember, we'll look at it from this way. It might be easier to see. There's the circle right there starting at 0 degrees over to the right. And there's pi. So after pi, then the z value started raising up. All right. So that gave me that. I'll give it the bring our colors back there like that. So that's how you c control the direction of your code, what you wanted to do with conditional statements. There's others. It's really powerful and it's a lot of fun. So let's see. So there's our uh, particle systems like this. So we'll do all kinds of designs for a fountain. I mean, really all kinds of cool designs. All right. Well, that's it for this lesson. And then um, I'll see you in the next lesson.